I always find it fascinating that people want these huge results, but for minimal effort. You know what I found? Is how you treat your business is how you get results. You want to fall asleep on your business? You want to treat your business like an amateur? Guess what's going to happen? You're going to get knocked out. You know, in my younger years, I always find it fascinating to see a knockout, you know, you know, blue corner versus a red corner, right? Chicago Bears versus the New England Patriots. For me, the victory was on the field. The victory was in the ring. And as I started to grow and mature as an entrepreneur, I started realizing that the victory is not in the ring. The victory is in preparation. The game is the fun part, but how you get ahead in business is how you treat the business. So really, I found five different ways to treat your business Number one, you can treat your business like a hobby. You're not 100% involved in it. You're kind of taking a stab into it. I'm trying this thing. You know, I just got involved. No, when you're committed, I am doing this. I am spreading. I am growing. I'm going to be competing. I'm going to be winning. But if you treat your business like a hobby, guess what you're going to get? Zero results and you make zero money. The thing is, if you just try to try to flirt with business, and you don't really put any thought behind it, any mentors helping you out, any systems behind uh, accountability, you're never gonna get anywhere with business. And just like people dance as a hobby, uh, people paint as a hobby, you know, people sing, at the, uh, uh, sing karaoke as a hobby, guess what you're gonna get in your business if you treat your business like a hobby? Nothing. Second way is as an employee. You, you take your multi-million dollar dreams, but you treat it like a minimum wage employee. What am I talking about? You're always expecting for somebody to tell you to do something. I'm going to need you to go ahead and come in tomorrow. So if you could be here around nine, that would be great. You say, okay, that's not my job because it's not my job description. Listen, as an entrepreneur, everything is your responsibility and everything is your job description. The third way you can treat your business is like a salesperson. That's all you care about is sales, 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 close, close, close. Next prospect, close. Next opportunity, get some business, close the deal. You don't care about systems. You don't care about building a team. You don't care about building an infrastructure. All you care about is that next sale. And that's why most salespeople eventually burn out. The fourth way you can treat your business, which is really ideal, is you treat the business like a what? Like an owner. Like you take responsibility for everything that's going on in your business. Your brand, your staff, your product, your people, everything you take responsibility for. You've got systems, you have support staff, you track your numbers, you have accountability, you have responsibility of delivering the best product, the best service, the best experience to your customers and to your community. And the fifth way to treat your business, which is my personal favorite, is treating your business like an athlete. That's why we created the brand, the Entrepathlete T-shirt. Why? Because we treat business like sport, like the best out of the military, the best out of sports, that's how I treat my business. I show up early and I stay late. I'm mentally prepared. I'm constantly personally developing. I'm constantly informing my troops. I'm constantly informing my team. I'm studying the X's and O's. Why? Because I'm going to outwit the devil. I'm going to outwork the devil. I'm going to outperform. I'm going to outwork and out hustle and outdo my competitor because I treat my business like an athlete. You see, 90% of success is what most people don't see. All these athletes, and a lot of them say, you know, the easy part is the game. The easy part is being in the ring. That's why I want my guys to be around Shorty Torres, who's a two-time champion, three-time defending, to say, you know what? You see me in the first round, knock this guy out. But what you don't see is a cryotherapy. What you don't see is a torn MCL. What you don't see is the, the, the swollen ankles, the swollen, the swollen hands, the, the, the eight, nine hours of practice every day. That's what people don't see. And before you want the glory, you got to be able to tell the true story.
Everybody sees the knockdown, but what's the real work behind actually getting in the ring? What's it like being a pro fighter in climbing your, climbing your way up? You know, fighting's hard, but it's it's the adversity, the stuff that I know in my job and my living that I'm going to have to go through. Yep. And I keep on pushing through no matter what. You know, again, in fights where I've been dropped, I've been, you know, I had one fight where I won my second belt where in the first round I was dropped, I broke my hand, tore my MCL on my right leg, and I was stuck in a very, very tight guillotine, which can mess you up in a, you know, in a position because your conditioning is going away. You can't yeah. breathe. And I was able to come back and come through adversity 20 more minutes and still punch my right hand even though it was broken, still kick on my right leg even though I, you know, it was torn, and keep on going. Once the, you know, the fight was over, I definitely couldn't walk anymore. Yeah. But it's life. Like, things happen to you. I knew I was better than that opponent, but I didn't expect all this stuff to come in front of me. Right. I still kept on pushing no matter what, and I kept on going and going and going because I did this, and I, I joined martial arts to be here. I wanted to inspire people and show if this shorty can do it, why can't you? Don't downsize your dreams to fit your current reality, but upgrade your conviction to match your destiny.